Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Our purpose in meeting with you this afternoon is to introduce the dental operatory and its components uh, to you. And as you see on camera, we have a typical senior cubicle consisting of a cabinetry, a drug compartment, x-ray view box, and various other components. Uh, the major uh, items relating to the treatment of patients uh, consist of the uh, dental unit at this point, the dental chair with the operating light attached to the chair base, uh, and the operating stool used by the dentist uh, as a, a convenient mechanism to carry out his procedures relative to the patient's uh, needs. Close up that we see here as the front of the unit, the instrument enclosure door or panel uh, is in the lock position. There is a key lock on the left side as you face the unit to lock this panel, which is a security uh, measure. Unlock, the panel then can be dropped into the all the way down position and, and engaging the master switch which now activates all of the components of the dental unit. Uh, closing that panel cuts off the master switch and of course locking it secures the unit which is a responsibility of each uh, individual student. So we'll put the panel into the open position and engage the T-handle on the instrument carriage and bring the entire instrument panel into the out position. There's a switch which engaged will allow you to recess that or put it in the in position. And at the end of an operating sequence, uh, this would be the uh, routine procedure. We'll have it in the out position. And at this time, uh, we will identify all of the uh, components and to some degree their functions uh, within the dental unit. The uh, panel itself consists of, a, of an air a gauge, which is an indication of the pressure uh, in the high speed or high pressure air lines and we will identify the other uh, items on the panel as we talk about uh, each individual system. There are seven modules in the dental unit and each or any of these can be put in any kind of order that the practitioner or the individual would prefer. This uh, advantage of modularity might mean that the high volume evac could be on this end or in the middle or in a uh, position which may be considered to be more favorable for a specific individual purpose. Each is on a drum uh, in the inside or back side of the unit, uh, which uh, in the out position allows us, of course, to activate to this particular unit. The close-up on the screen at the moment is the high volume evacuation handle. Uh, the lever that you see running at 90 degrees to the flow of air represents the lever in which the system can be activated or deactivated. It is actually a small metal cylinder with a hole which when in complete alignment with the system allows the maximum of suction to be uh, carried out. This suction system pulls approximately seven and a half inches of mercury and is at the maximum and is a very uh, active uh, system for removal of debris or excessive amounts of saliva uh, from the oral cavity. The tips which are traditionally used are either the disposable plastic type tip <clears throat> which has a perforation on the end to reduce the tendency to uh, uh, suck the tongue or the floor of the mouth very positively. This is a, a very excellent convenience item. Or, and these are disposable entities, or the autoclavable tip with the beveled end. With the beveled end, <clears throat> which again protects the patient from sharp uh, edges uh, in the recovery uh, of saliva or debris uh, from the oral cavity. This system uh, is recoverable or can be placed back in the unit uh, as you uh, see there. The next item is the 
saliva ejector, which runs off the same <coughs> suction system, but has a substantially less a suction uh, as an individual unit. As I said, the HVE, or high volume evacuation system, pulls approximately seven and a half inches of mercury. Uh, this uh, will pull about three, perhaps three and a half inches of uh, mercury as a suction entity. The saliva ejector is operated by the little knurled nut on the lateral side, and the white line that you see here, uh, when it is parallel to or in the line of the airstream, uh, is the maximum suction attainable. Now, as we want to reduce suction, uh, we turn this to the diagonal or to the point where we're now at 90 degrees to the flow of air, at which time the uh, suction is completely uh, eliminated. Uh, when we're working under a rubber dam or under a situation where we want a modest amount of suction, uh, then we would set the instrument at a position approximating this. If we need a lot of activity, a lot of suction from this local system, then obviously uh, we can increase it uh, up to the maximum. Uh, we should use this in the all-out position with caution, as when it is in the mouth protractedly, it will tend to suck the floor of the mouth or the soft tissue into the instrument and can cause a fair amount of untoward damage in the form of hematoma or irritated tissue. The instrument is utilized most frequently with a disposable tip, which I have just placed uh, in, which is completely flexible and which the operator or the patient uh, can adjust uh, appropriately to suit the position uh, requirements uh, of the operation at hand. These are, of course, not autoclavable and are disposed of after each operation. There's a small soft wire insert inside the tube, the plastic tube, which allows this bend and flexibility uh, to take place and <clears throat> is a very convenient item. Particularly when the operator is operating without a dental assistant, uh, this piece of equipment is very valuable because the patient himself or herself uh, can frequently help the a dental operator control excessive amounts of uh, saliva or air water coolant, which uh, inevitably collects uh, in the mouth. Turning this off and removing the tip, again, to retract the hose, we engage the drum, which we'll show you later, in the unit, which is spring activated and which will uh, wind the individual component up onto the drum and recess it uh, completely in the unit. Well, one thing that I would like to stress with you uh, is you never stuff the unit or the hose or the item into the unit. You allow it to recover I itself. Please recall this uh, as you're working uh, in the clinic. The next item is the three-way syringe. The three-way would be air, water, and air water, or a combination of the two. And as we see on the close-up, we can identify the switch which activates, in this case, the air, or the switch in profile which activates the water, as we can see on camera, or the center portion of that switch, which activates the air water, or an atomized stream of water and air. There is a heating device in the unit itself, which allows us to get isothermal water and air, reducing the irritation, which is classic when cold air uh, is utilized on a freshly cut uh, tooth tissue. The adjustment for air intensity or reduction, this is actually just an on-off switch. It has nothing to do with the volume of air. The air can be increased or decreased by swiveling this small switch and adjusting it to the intensity that is needed. The little triangular valve on the back of the instrument is a needle valve which in the open position or counterclockwise gives the maximum flow of water uh, from the syringe. Given maximum flow of water and air, we have a very active atomized stream for flushing interdental areas uh, during prophylaxis for cleaning up, uh, tidying up the mouth uh, following various procedures. There is laterally also on this unit a little pin that extends out. I'd call your attention to this. 
because it's important in keying that three-way syringe back into the unit. And if you follow me slowly, we'll put this back into the unit and key that laterally into its place. This precludes the instrument being damaged in this position when the carriage is released and it is not properly in the unit itself. So please take note of this little pin that stands up from the unit, which should be in a lateral position, allowing this to clear as the carriage uh, is uh, recessed. The next item on the unit, actually the fourth of the components from left to right, is the electrical system. This cord attaches to the electro-torque motor, which is a high torque, low speed motor for general rotary procedures uh, in the uh, treatment of patients. Now, as we're looking at this under extreme magnification, we see at the bottom, and this is a rather important item in terms of the of maintaining the integrity of this instrument, at the bottom where the arrow is now indicating is a guide pin. And there's a recess on the motor which this engages to be sure that the threading and the electrical linkage, which are the next two uh, recesses, are in the center of the camera. Uh, again, two rather delicate recesses, and the projections on the motor side uh, engage these two uh, to complete the electrical linkage. The two little hollow tube-like entities above the electrical uh, contact areas represent the air and water, the compressed air for providing coolant and the water for providing coolant to when and if it's necessary uh, to this system. Uh, normally, we do not operate uh, the low-speed motor with the uh, coolant active. However, it is possible and in situations may uh, demand its uh, use uh, at pertinent times. We've identified the electrical linkage from the unit. Uh, on camera now, we have the electro-torque motor itself, which each of you have and have purchased, uh, I would hope that it by this time has your student identification number as a protective mechanism and also that you have sent the warranty uh, card with the number back uh, to the manufacturer to be sure that the warranty situation is active. Now, the unit, excuse me, the motor has the same more or less triangular shaped recesses that we saw on the cord and to engage the motor to the cord, which we will attempt to do uh, now, uh, the first step in that sequence would be to engage the guide pin, which projects quite far out from the cord, into the recess, the single recess on the motor, and this lines up the electrical linkage, at which time uh, we can turn the knurled uh, uh, nut to firmly set the linkage uh, in final place. At this time, then, we have air and water and electricity in the cord with a strain relief mechanism to reduce the tendency to uh, strip or damage the wiring uh, in the routine uh, use uh, of this uh, instrument. While we are on camera with this uh, hand pee or with this motor, I will take the ultra-centric handpiece, so which is also an item each of you have uh, purchased and have available, and engage the handpiece uh, onto the motor. This is done by slipping it all the way to place and then rotating it until the little spring-activated pin uh, is engaged in one of four holes on the circumference of the handpiece itself. Now, it is very important that that pin be engaged so that during procedures, the handpiece, uh, for some untoward reason, does not uh, become disengaged. To remove the handpiece is to press the handpiece toward the motor, disengaging the pin, rotating about a quarter of a turn or less, and then removing the handpiece a component from the motor itself. We can quickly do that by going to place, rotating, and engaging uh, the pin. It is also wise to note that the blank left in the handpiece should be 
in it at all times when the instrument is not being used. This protects a very concentric chuck or collet which is utilized to grip the burr or the rotating instrument uh, during active procedures. So that I would call your attention to this point and when the instrument is being sterilized or when it's not in use, be sure that the blank or a burr of some sort is in that spring activated chuck or collet to protect the integrity of that uh, phase of the mechanism. This entire unit then can be recessed into the unit as we have seen with the previous components by releasing the drum mechanism, recoil mechanism, and allowing it uh, to go all the way uh, to place. Now let's identify the fifth item on the panel from left to right, and actually the fifth and sixth because these are identical systems. It's a dual system. This is the high pressure air line, and I have attached a, an air turbine, which is a standard item for use and which you will be uh, using uh, a little bit later uh, in the uh, sequence of events. This system is activated as with the electrical system by the foot control, which we will show uh, a bit later uh, in the uh, chain of events. The air handpiece or air turbine handpiece also can be recessed and we have a similar or identical coupling to provide a miniature head, standard head interplay or to provide an alternative, alternative system uh, should there be uh, something wrong with this one. So that in effect we have two uh, similar systems or identical systems relating to the use of the high pressure air. And again, uh, they can be uh, recessed uh, into the unit. The foot control unit, which is at the base of the dental unit and attached to it by a three quarter inch gray electrical conduit. The foot control activates the rotary components of the dental unit. And looking in the picture, let's identify the uh, parts of the foot control. In the middle, pointing here, is the selector switch, which permits us to activate the electrical low speed system by pressing with our foot and or the two high speed air systems uh, in the rotary package. In addition, we have a switch marked W, which allows us to have water coolant in the system when the system is active or to eliminate water by simply depressing the switch and deactivating the system. In addition, marked A is a air or chip blower system which is active on the air turbine uh, components. Pressing that allows the operator, particularly operating without an assistant, to <coughs> clean the area uh, with uh, an air jet which uh, comes out of the coolant to spray tip on the uh, high-speed air turbine handpiece. The ring at the base of the foot control activates the system uh, which is currently active at any given time. The ring on the base of the foot control uh, activates the low speed cutting system when, as you see on the split screen, the pilot light is on selector channel one. There are a couple of things to remember in utilizing the low speed. One, that the selector button should be on one, and secondly, that the water system should be turned off. I will indicate that. The light should be off on the panel marked W. To get forward rotation for the low speed or the electric uh, motor system, it is necessary 
to turn the foot control in a counterclockwise direction. That is, forward or clockwise on the handpiece is achieved by a counterclockwise rotation on the foot control. The reverse, of course, is true. Counterclockwise on the handpiece is clockwise on the foot control. Placing the low speed component into the unit, we activate the high speed air turbine system by switching the selector button to channel two or station two or three, uh, depending on which system, since they're dual systems, that the handpiece is attached to. We may have a low speed air handpiece or a miniature head a handpiece in addition to a standard head on uh, either of the two systems uh, simultaneously. As you see on the panel, the selector switch now has placed the, the cutting system two into activation and the water coolant necessary for turbine use uh, is activated and we can control the volume of water to that coolant by turning this dial in a counterclockwise direction to open or to increase water flow or clockwise to slow down or reduce flow. Remember that the on-off activation comes from the foot control and is indicated when the red pilot light is on in the W position. These are needle valves and are not to be used as on-off switches, but only as volume control. We have water coolant in all three of the cutting uh, channels. We rarely use it in the low speed. We use it routinely in either of the high speed uh, channels. We're showing a close-up of the air turbine with the water coolant active and I'll activate that by activating the foot control and you see the heavy water spray and this can be reduced by adjusting the needle valve to a finer setting. Now in addition if we want to add air to that coolant the air coolant switch then is turned on and Going back to the handpiece, we have a very fine atomized mist of air and water, which is a very excellent coolant and, of course, vitally necessary for the high speeds of rotation which are attainable uh, with a turbine in excess of three, uh, four, even 500,000 revolutions per minute. We have now swung the camera to the rear side the back side of the dental unit, which exposes the inner workings of this rather complex uh, piece of equipment. We see here the six systems, the HVE or high volume evac system, saliva ejector, the uh, three-way syringe, the electro torque, and the two high-speed uh, air uh, systems, as well as a blank, which uh, obviously uh, uh, is available for uh, an additional HVE or some other system which we may wish to add uh, to this particular unit. Uh, it is important also to realize that when uh, we wish to retract a cord that is not available, that it is possible identifying the system to push this through and reach around to the panel in front uh, and pull the uh, cord out when it has uh, reached a point where we can't reach it from the front panel. Uh, in addition, the solids filler, which is a <clears throat> function of the high volume evacuation system, is the last port of call if an inlay or a, a <clears throat> foreign body of any sort is picked up within the system. There is a, a brass a screen in this jar which is removable 
and is uh, removed periodically uh, by uh, maintenance personnel uh, to clean it. The student is not to uh, in any way engage this part of the unit except to perhaps retract or to uh, get a hold of a cord uh, by this uh, particular mechanism. The light is a convenience to the uh, repair personnel, and these are the uh, solenoids and the various linkages uh, to each of the uh, systems uh, in the unit. It is possible, when necessary, to remove by uh, this individual set screw uh, each or any of these components when they're necessary, when it is necessary for uh, major repairs, and replace it with a a new unit. That is a possibility and is uh, one of the advantages of this uh, modular uh, concept. Having some familiarity with the various components within the unit, uh, for this view we're able to demonstrate the flex arm and flex arm tray setup which in this instance, is, as, as we're looking at, is on the right side of the unit, but can be moved, uh, should it be necessary, to the left side of the unit, allowing us to position the tray uh, behind or lateral to the patient, uh, depending on the area or, and the type of procedure uh, being carried out. The flex arm in its working position uh, would be uh, something like this, and it's important to understand that we can raise the tray without any uh, air lever release necessary, but to lower it, simply lift lightly and release the flex arm uh, release lever and put it down to the height uh, that is uh, ideal for uh, the circumstances uh, present. The tray swivels 360 degrees so that we can position uh, our equipment in a more or less ideal uh, relationship. We, it is possible uh, to extend the a three-way syringe, for instance, and leave it in the instrument holder uh, thus. Uh, we would perhaps place the low-speed uh, equipment in that position while we're using high-speed, uh, retracting, changing to low-speed. The instrument holders are extremely uh, convenient adjuncts, particularly uh, for the operator who is not uh, utilizing an assistant. In closing the unit and securing the unit, it would be necessary to remove the handpiece, retract the motor, remove the turbine, and retract the turbine hose, and retract the three-way syringe so that the pin uh, is properly keyed and it is properly recessed releasing the carriage uh, lever, pushing the carriage into its inside position, and closing the panel to the full up position, and locking it with the key, and the unit uh, is secure. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.